Okay. So what is the strength of the electric field at the position indicated by the dot in the figure? So let's look at this figure. So we have two positive particles and we have a dot and we need to figure out the strength of the electric field. So let's just draw this out. So we have some dot for positive charge over here, positive charge over here. And we have, so, between here to here, that's five meters, five centimeters, sorry. And then between here to here, and then here to here, five centimeters, and five centimeters. So for a positive particle, the electric field will be um, on a, the, the dot here will be pointing outward. So the electric field line will be over here. So this will be E1. So let's call this particle one. And this will be particle two. And then similarly, because it's a positively charged particle, it would point out like that. And then we can try to figure out some angles as we solve. So this would be like this. And because this is a symmetric diagram, we know that the total will be here because the Y components of E1 and E2, sorry, I mislabeled this. So this should be E2. The Y components of E1 and E2 cancel out because it's a symmetrical diagram and we're left with the X components. So we'll, we'll solve here using the following. So so to get the distance over here between the two, the, par the positive particle and the po just the neutral particle here or the dot, this location, we need to do a square root, so let's call this D. So let's say D is the square root of five centimeters, so five squared plus five squared. So this is just Pythag Pythagoras theorem because this is just a right angle triangle. One side, so this side is five, and this side is also five centimeters. And this will give us five square root two centimeters. The equation for the electric field is as follows. E equals K. K is just uh, the electric field constant. And then Q is the charge. And then R is the distance between the two, the location and the particle. So R here, actually I should have labeled this as R. We already found for R. Q is given in the question, so both particles are one uh, nano coulomb charge. So nano is just one t uh, times 10 to the negative nine. So here we know K is nine times 10 to the nine, so this is just a constant. We'll just move this up here. Let's write out some values that we know. So K nine times 10 to the nine. This is just a constant Newton meter squared over Coulomb squared. We know Q is given, so it's one times 10 to the nine Coulombs. R is what we calculated up here. So knowing this, we'll subst substitute these in. <clears throat> so we get E equals 9 times 10 to the 9. Q in this scenario is 9 times 10, negative 9. So this should be negative, sorry. And we have R, 5 square root 2 times 10 to the negative 2. So we're trying to convert this to meters squared. So on top, we have 9. On the bottom, we have 5 squared, which is 25, square root 2 squared is just 2, and then 10 times 10 to the negative 2 squared is just 1, so we're left with 9 over 
50. I'm sure this is times 10 to the negative 4. I missed that component. It will be 50 times 10 to the negative 4. And this will give us 9 divided by 10. 50 times 10 to the negative 4. That will give us 1,800. Okay, so let's just go back up to the diagram. So we can recognize that this triangle over here is one of the special triangles. So it's one, one of the tri special triangles is this. And we know that the angles here and here are 45 degrees. So seeing that this side and this side, so this side and this side are the same, we know that the angle over here is 45 degrees. That means the angles over here is 45 degrees and the angle over here is 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees. Just basically using the special triangles. We can use sine, cos, but it's just a shortcut. And then now we can, we know that the y component of E1, E2 cancel each other out because the y component over here is going upward, the y component is going downward, and these E1, E2 are equivalent based on symmetry. We only need to find the x component of E1 and the x component of E2, so this direction. So we'll use cos to evaluate. So E total in our diagram is E1 plus E2. So we know E1 equals E2, so we just have 2 times E1, let's say, because they're equivalent. That means we'll get 2 um, sorry, E1 in the x direction. So we know that if this will be in the x direction, so we'll do, let me think about this for a second. So we know we've calculated what E is. So we have E cos 45 degrees. So E is over here, what we already calculated based on our formula. So now we've taken the x component, multiply it by 2, because we have two electric field, electric fields. So we have 2, 1800, cos 45 degrees. Cos 45 degrees, let's go back up here. So cos 45 degrees using the special triangle. This would just equal adjacent or hypotenuse. So adjacent is 1 over square root 2. So I'll use this down here. This will be 2 times 1800 times 1 over square root 2. And we end up with 3600 over square root 2 for the electric field. And the units are newtons per coulomb. So what is the strength of the electric field at the position indicated by a dot? So we know the strength is 3,600 over square root 2. We can evaluate this as a decimal point in our calculator if we wanted to. What is the direction of the electric field at the position indicated by a dot in the figure? Specify the direction as an angle. So the direction will be in the positive x. So the angle is 0 degrees. So let's, look, let's go back up here. So the angle is zero degrees because ET lines up and we know that the Y components of E1 and E2 cancel it out. So let's look at the solution. So they've identified E1 and E2 are equivalent. They calculate using the correct formula and then they end up with the correct total electric field. They provide the incorrect angle. So the Angle for the separate components is 45 degrees, but the angle for the total electric field is zero degrees. Correct answer for part A, incorrect answer for part B, theta minus 
here to these because y components Part B of the solution is incorrect. 